story amen. never gets old. Amen. amen. Uh, in my prayer today, I prayed that the Lord would uh, lead Dave and just work this whole thing out. And it's funny how he does it. He does yeah. it every time. Amen. Have your Bibles turn to uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. We're going to actually be, if you want to go ahead and get it, uh, John chapter 9 is where our text is going to be. But I want to preface my message tonight with this. Uh, we're going to look at that old, old story, but we're going to look at it in a different light than maybe you'd hear at uh, some churches. Uh, we're going to look at the man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so I want to start out here and, uh, and just say that I believe He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. The mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and believed on in the world, and received up into glory. You see the Lord Jesus Christ there, and in in, in that Scripture right there is so loaded. You see the story of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that old, old story. Amen. God the Word was manifest in the flesh. Amen. And the Bible calls it a mystery. And it's a mystery because you can't explain that. Right. Like, brother, uh, like Brother Ruckman says, if you stayed up all night, you couldn't explain that. Right. It's a mystery. Yes. He was 100% God according to John chapter 1. The Bible says the Word was with God and the Word was God. And in John 1, 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And according to 1 Timothy 2.5, uh, Christ is the mediator. Yeah. He's the man. For there's one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Amen. And you think about that tonight. You think about and you realize uh, all He did on the cross and how wonderful that is. But the very agony that He must have went through to become a man. Yeah. Bible says he, he, he thought it not robbery to, be, robbery to be equal with God, but that he would become a man. What that must have took to leave his place in glory and become a man for our sakes. Um, again, it's, it's a mystery. You can't explain it, but I believe it. Uh, the other day at work, I'm working on this uh, vehicle, and it has an ABS problem, analog brakes, and... Uh, I've got this little tester, and when I hook it up to that thing, it uh, it powers up the system, and the system does its thing, but it's supposed to send a message back to my little tester and say, hey, I'm working. Well, it's getting powered. Everything's coming up. The lights are working, and it's, wor and it's working. But I'm not getting no signal back. And I've got two testers, and they're both the same way, and both of those testers work on the other vehicle. So I call this engineer, and uh, the guy that... Uh, when something's too smart for me to figure out, he tells me how to figure it out. <laughs> what he tells me is, he tells me, he said, that, that power wire that, that you send power on, the module um, multiplexes the signal back on that same wire to tell your tester that, hey, I'm working. And then he said, I don't, I don't understand that. He said, but that's what it does. And I said, that's okay, brother. I'm a Bible believer. I believe a lot of things that I don't understand. And, and that's, that's it. God, God was manifest in the flesh. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Because it's in the Word. Alright, having said that, go to uh, Gospel according to John, chapter 9. St. John 9 here. Now the Holy Spirit showed me this when Brother Ingeseth was here preaching. One of his messages, he used this same text. But the Holy Spirit showed me something that day that I haven't got over yet. And this is, it just blew me away. And the Lord's been dealing with me and I've been kind of studying on it. And when I went to the Lord in prayer about what to preach today, this is the thought. This is what kept coming to me. John chapter 9. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for today and the opportunity to stand before my brothers and sisters here and preach your word. Uh, God, I pray that you'll help me to do it in your power. God, that you'll fill me with your spirit, 
uh, that you'll calm my nerves and collect my thoughts. And God, that you'll minister to your people. God, we'll be careful to give you the glory and honor. We ask that you do all these things upon, based upon the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, based upon his faith that uh, he exhibited that now is on our account, God. We pray, God, that you'll do these things for his sake. Uh, just help us, we pray. All this in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 9 here. We're going to begin in verse, in verse 1. The Bible says, And Jesus passed by, then saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. And Brother Ingesef wasn't even trying to preach this truth. But what the Lord showed me right there is that this is a picture. Uh, the Lord making, the Lord Jesus Christ spitting on the ground and making that clay. Yeah. It's a picture yeah. of the Lord, of, of God the Father. Amen, picture of God the Father overshadowing Mary. The Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary and creating the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That clay, the Bible says, He put on the robe of flesh. Yeah. Amen. And he became, he became like us. And I know He was God, but He was also a man. Yeah. And, uh, and this is the picture of it here, you see. Uh, if you want to go back to your left uh, couple chapters, John chapter 5, the Bible gives us some insight into why the Lord Jesus Christ did these miracles or what he was trying to do by doing these miracles. And I understand they were assigned to the Jews. But look at here in John 5, uh, verse 19. The Bible says, They answered Jesus and said unto them, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. And uh, that's him acknowledging his humanity. The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, the Father, these also doeth the Son likewise. So when you look at these times when the Lord Jesus Christ healed the leper, that's, that, that is a picture that God will cleanse the spiritually unclean in the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, that's a picture that God was working this out so that you could be saved, so that you can be saved from your spiritual deadness. Right. And also with this cleansing, or this, uh, this this blind man receiving his sight, that is a picture. This was this is the Lord Jesus Christ telling us what I'm telling you. He's saying that's a picture of what God the Father is doing. When he got down and made that clay, and then anointed the eyes of that blind man, that was a picture of what God the Father was doing. You don't have to go with me. Genesis chapter 2, 7. Uh, my message, if I could put a title to it, I struggled with a couple different things. Uh, uh, the Lord fixing clay with clay. Yeah. Or uh, clay, to, clay to make us and clay to fix us. But uh, just that truth that the Lord of glory, that God the Word would come down and enrobe Himself in flesh. Amen. And then go through what he went through for us. Amen. Such a blessing. I ought to make you love him. I ought to make you want to work for him tonight. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Go down to uh, chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, And this is the commandment and the warning of death. The uh, Bible tells us that God was created, a uh, man was created in God's image, so we had body, soul, and spirit. We were a trinity, just like just like God is. And the the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Um Genesis uh, 3.6 here, 
is uh, the fall. But in this, in this illustration in John, uh, we're the blind man. In this illustration in John, we're the blind man. This blind man was born blind from his birth. Just like you and I were born spiritually blind. Just like you and I were born spiritually dead. And that's what I want to establish right here. If there be one lost among us tonight, I challenge you to, to, to turn in your Bible. If you don't have one, grab one from somebody next to you. And I want you to see the story, that old, old story that we were singing about. Um, so this is Adam, the very first man, and Eve, the very first woman, fallen, committing sin. Genesis 3, 6. And, woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And in 2.16, God told them, In the day that thou eat uh, thereof, thou shalt surely die. But they're still walking around. So the truth of that is that they died spiritually that day. Um, you know, in the very, in the very, uh, in the very um, re uh, rebuke of sin and the sentence, God said, uh, "We better kick them out of the garden, uh, lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever." And He also said that uh, you're going to have to till the ground in the sweat of your brow. You're going to have to eat all the days of your life. So when He when He forced, when He said that in the day thou shalt eat, thou shalt surely die, He was talking about spiritual death and spiritual. Uh, blindness like this man here in, in John chapter 9. They died spiritually that day and consequent, consequently uh, you and I were born spiritually dead. You were, you were broken that day. And that day uh, you died. Turn to Romans 5. You know the Lord Jesus Christ when, uh, when Him and His uh, disciples they were eating some corn. They didn't wash their hands first. Uh, the Pharisees got upset with them. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, It's not that which goeth into a man that defileth a man, but that which cometh out. And what the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about there, He was trying to show them that they were born corrupt. He's trying to show us that we were born that way. Um... It's not, it's not what we do that corrupts us. The fact is that we were born corrupt and, and we're just showing that. In the sin that we commit and the, and the wrong things we do, we're just showing that. Romans 5, verse 18 and 19, I'm going to look at it, but I'm going to, I'm going to split them in half here. We're going to start out with the bad news. Uh, verse 18, the first half of the verse, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. And if you want to know whose offense caused that, look up in verse 14. Amen. The Bible says it was Adam's offense. Amen. See, you're all descendants of Adam. Adam was the first man, and uh, we didn't come from monkeys, and it was nothing like that. Amen. God created man in His image, and we're all descendants of Adam. Therefore, uh, when Adam sinned, he corrupted that bloodline. And, the, and, and as it here says here in verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. The first half of verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. If you're sitting here today and you've never been saved, that's you. That was me in 2004. Uh, let's look at the Ephesians chapter 2 here. Uh, you don't have to go there. The Bible says... And you has He quickened. And He's talking to saved people there. You has He quickened. That spiritual birth. That circumcision made without hands. You has He quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So in other words, you, you, I mean, I don't know how, much of you, how many of you watch much TV, but uh, they got that, ep that, that series out, The Walking Dead. That's the world today, folks. Yeah. A bunch of dead people walking around. Yeah. They think they're doing something. They think that they're living a life. They think that they're getting, that they're that they're happy, but they're not. Right. They're, anything that they're doing in uh, if they if they if they get a college education and become a millionaire and uh, don't get saved, they miss the boat. Amen. Uh, he left us here. He left us here so that we would be a witness for him to the ends of the earth. The only reason that the Lord wouldn't knock us in the head and take us home 
The day we got saved is because He's got a job for us. There's nothing in this earth, there's nothing that you can do apart from working for the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to amount to anything. Amen. Uh, it's, 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 there, the bottom line is, is that there is an, there's two places for your soul to spend eternity. In heaven with the Lord or in a place called the lake of fire. And, and if you live doing exactly what you want down here your whole life, and never do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or heaven forbid, never get saved. Right. It's a waste. Amen. It doesn't matter how much you've done. It doesn't matter how much you've got. Walking dead, we're, there, we're surrounded by them. And if you can't see that, if you can't see that, it's because you're spiritually blind. That's right. Just like, just like this man in this verse, Amen. you're spiritually blind. Right. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 16. The fact is that, that the Lord Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Amen. And He came to open the eyes of them that can't see. You know, the Bible talks about Him that has ears to hear, let Him hear. Him that has eyes to see, let Him see. Uh, those people, just they just can't see. Like Dilbert was talking about this morning, the rich, there's not many rich, not many wise. And it's because they can't see. They, they just think they're so good, they can't see. Mark chapter 16 and verse 13. Bible says, And they went and told it. They went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Wait a minute. What have I done? Matthew. Matthew. Thank you, brother. I always do that. <laughs> Thank God for a merciful assistant pastor down there. <laughs> Didn't make me sweat it out. Matthew 16, 13. Bible says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And He saith unto them, But who do ye say that I am? Verse 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And look at Jesus' response here. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but by but thy Father which is in heaven. These, so these things are spiritually discerned. You need to have the Holy Spirit in you, and God's got to show you these things. Amen. Spiritual blindness. So we use clay to make us. And sin broke us. So God used clay to fix us. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 14. We've already covered this scripture, but I just want you to look at it. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, as of the only begotten of the Father. God the Word became God the Son. If you want to go with me, go to Hebrews chapter 2. So nervous. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him of the seed of Abraham. Philippians 2.
I know we're flipping a lot of places tonight, but you won't hear you won't hear you won't hear the Lord Jesus Christ preached as a man. Because people are afraid of being called a heretic. They're being they'll be afraid of you know people thinking you don't believe in the deity of Christ. But I'll tell you, it's a blessing to think that the Lord of glory would come down and become a man and suffer what he suffered for us. Philippians 2, chapter, uh, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And the good news in verse 9, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, has given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, the man, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, as a man, he came down and became a man. And as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the will of the Father. And based upon that, based upon what he did, God the Father raised him, uh, put his name above all other names. The Bible says there is no other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Yeah. Uh, as a man, Jesus was a uh, man that understood the necessity of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, and in Luke chapter 4, verse 4, uh, Jesus as a man, He fasted 40 days. And the Bible says, and afterward He hungered. And the devil came to Him and tempted Him and, uh, and said, make these uh, stones into bread. And what did Jesus Christ, what did the man say? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. As a man, He understood the importance of the Word of God. He understood that that was His life, life, lifeline. It was more to him than his food. It was more to him than, than, than anything. That without that word, uh, that he was that he was nothing. He'd be just better off to wither away from not eating if he couldn't have that word. Uh, how many times did Jesus tell the Pharisees, "You do not, you do err, not knowing the scriptures." And he says to him a lot of times, "Have you never read?" The Lord Jesus Christ was a man that understood the importance of the word of God. Jesus also, as a man, was a man of prayer. In Luke 18.1, he says, Man ought always to pray and not faint. Amen. Luke 6.12 and 9.28, the Bible says Jesus went unto the mountain to pray. Right. As a man, the Lord Jesus Christ was a man of prayer. Yeah. He understood the importance of prayer and what that, what that allowed in the, in the personal fellowship with God and your walk with God and to have that closeness with God. Uh, Jesus Christ as a man was a, was a man of faith. Uh, go to Galatians chapter 2. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was a man of faith so much that we're justified by His faith. Galatians, two, uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Galatians 2, 16. The Bible says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Right there it is. By His faith. By the faith of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And if that wasn't clear enough, the Holy Spirit says, Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we may, might be justified by the faith of Christ. Amen. Not by the works of law. Amen. Uh, Jesus Christ as a man was a man of faith. Uh, John chapter 11 uh, in verse 41 and 2, at the raising of Lazarus, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ exhibited His prayer and He exhibited His faith. When He was standing in front of that sepulcher and they rolled the stone away and He prays to God the Father, exhibiting His prayerfulness. And uh, then He says, he, says I, he thanks Him for hearing Him and then He says, I know that you hear me, that you always hear me. Yeah. And He's exhibiting His faithfulness there. He didn't doubt for one second that uh, God the Father heard Him. Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews 4.15, was tempted like in as all points like as we are without sin. The Bible says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. And if you want to establish the, the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ, read James 1.13 sometime. The Bible says in James 1.13 that 
God cannot be tempted with sin. So he was tempted as a man. Yeah. If, if nothing else tonight, that ought to give you confidence in prayer. When you got a problem and you go to your high, high priest, he knows because he was there. He, he, he was tempted in his all points like as we are. Not just like we are, not just as we are, like as we are. Amen. Yet without sin. Amen. Uh, so he can be reached with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows what you're going through. When you go to him with the problem, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father right now, according to the Bible, right. he can look at your problem and he can feel it. Amen. And he can look to the Father and he can say, You know, that one's mine. Amen. That one's in me. Right. And then I know how he, know what he's going through. I know how he feels. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing Amen. that he would become a man and, and suffer temptation uh, for us so that he can be a faithful high priest. Amen. He owed no debt. Excuse me. Amen. That's just the way the Lord built me. The Spirit gets in me and I get tear I tear up and it just <laughs> Glory to God. Uh he owed no debt. We just read in Hebrews 4.15 that uh, he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. So indeed, he owed no debt. He, he never sinned. 33 sinless years in the perfect will of God the Father. Amen. We were in Romans 15 earlier establishing that, establishing that in Adam we're all born sinners. But the good news there is that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't have that problem. Right. Just like in, in just like in John chapter nine, when Jesus bent down and made that clay from his spittle, uh, God the Father was the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, not not Adam. Right. So in the blood, he owed no sin. He didn't have that contamination that we get from our father uh, Adam. He owed no debt. Owed no debt indeed. He owed no debt uh, because of birth. He he was born of God the Father. Uh, that. Uh, seed of the woman that was uh, prophesied way back in Genesis 2. He was born of the seed of the woman. See, he didn't have that problem we have, uh, that sin-cursed uh, bloodline that came from Adam. He owed no debt. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Getting ready to wrap up right here. See in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 here, that old, old story that we've been singing about. The Lord Jesus Christ, the man, dying in our place. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, the Bible says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Remember, He owed no debt. So he could die in our place. Died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. <laughs> Romans 4.25 says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification? God the Word coming down to this, this sin-cursed earth as a man, uh, fulfilling the law, and then taking our punishment on that cross that purchases salvation. Based upon that, the Lord Jesus Christ, or God the Father, can impute unto you the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He can impute unto you the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it's a free gift today now. Romans uh, 6.20 or 8... 626 says the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord please if you want to start coming to the piano I'm going to wrap this up right here with these next couple scriptures uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 says how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Verse 15 says, And for this cause He is the mediator of the New Testament, 
that by the means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that we were under the first testament that which are called that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance and I've already shared with you first Timothy 2 5 but I'm going to read it again for there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus Amen. Ephesians 2 15 says having abolished in his flesh see in his flesh in his clay having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make himself of twain one new man and so making peace you need peace tonight Amen. maybe somebody here has never been saved and you realized uh, through the word of God going out you've realized that uh, you're a sinner uh, just, I mean, forget all the things you've done. Uh, just the fact that you're born a descendant of Adam makes you a sinner. You've realized that tonight, and you've realized that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the man Jesus Christ, that He is the Savior. You can be saved today. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and believe in thine heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it goes ahead and gives you in the 13th uh, verse of that chapter, it goes ahead and gives you a promise. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. While we all stand uh, tonight, all heads bowed and eyes closed.